Hi, everybody. Welcome to this series of focusing conversations through which you will get to know the extraordinary members of our online forest training program. I'm so pleased to include you via these videos in our exciting and timely project of using Genlin's focusing to empower community life. It's so nice to be with you. Yes, it's nice to be here with you as well, especially coast to coast, West Coast, East Coast, yeah. I was editing our, our uh, the recording of our meeting from um, <clears throat> Wednesday night, yeah. and your sharing was so lovely. It was such a rich conversation with everyone and to hear about people's experiences. And I think that's one of the things that I'm just enjoying about Forest is uh, the, the conversations and how we go to a different level of, of depth in, in what we're saying and sharing with each other. And always surprising. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. The uh, One of the important things to me about it is that the idea of interaction first, the idea uh, that we are one organism, all of us, but, but in this group one, and that, that the conversation evolves out of all of the diversity of experience and um, perspectives and personalities, and that it the whole thing makes uh, the forward movement, mm -hmm. including the things that you feel like are a pain in the ass or you don't agree with or uh, you get impatient with or all of those kinds of things like within a person. It makes me think of the inner democracy um, video that we share, which I really enjoyed. But yeah, just like hearing, hearing all of those parts and all of those parts participating in that forward movement and the shaping of um, that one. So yeah, yeah, I love that. So in, in this conversation, what, uh, what I want to do is, is ask each person just a little bit about themselves, not biography, but just what you want to say about yourself, who you are, and then what focusing in community empowerment means to you. So I guess who I am, <laughs> Miko, uh, you know, living in, in Sacramento, California, and um, who I am, I am, or I guess the work that I do, I'm, I'm a hypnotist, I have my own hypnosis practice, and I also think of myself as a healing facilitator because I incorporate focusing into that language and interaction as well, so not just strictly a hypnotist. It's a wonderful integration, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Speaking to the implicit, speaking to the underneath. Yes, yes, and I think that's why I feel so much resonance with with focusing because it does go to those deeper places and kind of uh, bring that conversation and interaction there. Um, oh, so just oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Can I? I just was bursting with curiosity about what made you become a hypnotist. So I'm also a manager of social justice programs at a farmed animal sanctuary. Um, and, but, but last year went to a retreat where, um, it was like a spiritual retreat led by, um, this indigenous healer. And she, during a medicine wheel ceremony told me that, uh, my ancestors were calling me to return to, she said to do their medicine. And I didn't know what their medicine was, but did different research into healing modalities and, came across focusing and, and doing that research. And I think um, there was something about it that felt ancestral. And when I say ancestral, it just felt like my body knew it. And like it was something that went back to all of those who came before me. I don't know, just like part of like a human lineage um, that it just felt very familiar coming into. And so it resonated with me as maybe part of that, that medicine that she was talking about. Um, but also I think focusing and I felt like focusing was working with the implicit and the subconscious mind. And so hypnosis very, very clearly uh, direct work with the subconscious mind as well. So I went into hypnosis knowing that I was also interested in focusing uh, mm -hmm. And so it's just this, this this connection of how can you work with the implicit, the subconscious mind, that deeper level. Um, so that's how I got into hypnosis. That is so interesting. And and you associated um, 
the ancestral with working with the unconscious and with the implicit. Like you were, you were going into the whole background, uh, the whole history um, in, in doing that. And mm-hmm. you were, a, a feeling like you were embodying your ancestors. There. Yeah. I mean, I think just the way that even with like both hypnosis and, and, and focusing, the way that there seems to be this internal wisdom that mm-hmm. comes forward, it seems like it's not just mine. It seems like, and I guess when I say ancestral, it feels like it's deeper to those who've come before me, as well as like a, a connection to everyone that kind of is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just feels like a connection to wisdom that is beyond me. Um, that goes back, that goes across, maybe goes forward in a way. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's this embodied feeling of, of connection that is within. It's, it's wonderful to hear that connection. Yeah. Cause I, I haven't, I haven't come across that connection between, um, well, between, uh, ancestral wisdom and, uh, and, focusing and hypnosis. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful example of how life lives through, through us and that you are a unique, you know, microcosm of the universe and, and it comes together in you in a very particular way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Yeah. No, go ahead. Do you, do you have a, a sense of, your particular ancestors? Yeah, so I actually, I did an, an I did um, uh, one of those ancestry tests or whatever after I got that message from her. Cause I was like, who are, who are my ancestors and, and what does that mean? And so, you know, most recently my mom is from Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies. Yeah. Um, and my, my dad is, you know, African-American. So his family has been here for generations. But when I took the ancestry test, it showed 80% of my ancestry came from, from Africa, a lot of it West Africa, um, North Africa, um, and uh, East Africa as well, but also um, some Asia and um, some like indigenous South America, because you know the West Indies, I think that's where that's coming from, as well as a small amount of, of England, but largely West Africa, but also, you know, kind of just spread out all over. And so I think that's why something like the embodied feeling that that comes with practices like focusing, I think just reflects a human lineage, mm-hmm. um, you know, something that we we all can can access and do within our bodies. Um, and that's that's part of why it, I think, resonated. Mm-hmm. It's more the human uh, ancestry than particularly like the African tribal ancestry that you are uh, that you're coming with. Yeah, and I think it's like kind of just you know, each culture has worked with that sense of embodiment and that deeper wisdom in, in different ways. Um, you know, so maybe how that that played out in African cultures is one one doorway, but really a doorway to a deeper cross cross human experience um, of of that kind of. Um, way of being of the felt sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I sort of got you onto this branch of your tree when I was so curious about why you became a hypnotist. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna bring you back to where you were about describing your work and. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'm a hypnotist, healing facilitator, also um, a manager of social justice programs at a farmed animal sanctuary. And I think one of the things about that work, the being um, um, the manager of social justice programs at a farmed animal sanctuary is just this idea of sanctuary. I think it's come to have resonance for me as a space where we engage in the work of yeah, as a liberatory space, right? Where there may be harm or, or something or injustice going on beyond a sanctuary space, but within a sanctuary space, there is this intentional effort to cultivate greater justice and compassion than beyond what is, right? So I think that, that idea of sanctuary in an internal way, you know, 
as well as the the spaces we create is something that has um, deep resonance for me. Also, I think in terms of thinking about for people who experience marginalization and oppression, what does that work of, of liberation look like? What is the the liberatory, what are the liberatory practices that we engage in? And I feel like focusing and and self-hypnosis is one. And what are the liberatory spaces that that we create as well, which is that community piece. Like I think of yeah. this very community um, mm -hmm. and the work that we do together and in interacting to um, cultivate more of a liberatory dynamic than exists beyond that sanctuary space. Um, I love that term, liberatory practices mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and I and yeah I think um it's the, the kind of work that we do in, in interacting with those deeper parts of ourselves and in interacting with each other um is so foundational to that kind of liberatory work um so I think that's what brought me to to force, right? What what role does um, that kind of focusing and relational dynamic have in the larger community and in, in, our, in our interactions and engagement with each other? Do you see force as a kind of sanctuary space? I don't yet, because I think one of the things that I'm kind of grappling with, which is a question that I've been really sitting with that us, us them language and why it doesn't connect with me. There's something about the personal work that we have to start. I don't know, like I don't feel my sense of connection with people across, I feel it within. Like, mm. I don't, and so there, there's a quality there that I, I don't know, that I think I have to feel into, but, and is really actually kind of puzzling to me, but I think it's because in part, I, have, I as a person have shifted over the past year, um, and that I think that there are ways and in healthy ways that I was taking responsibility for other people's emotions and mm -hmm. kind of being in this emotional caretaker dynamic. And mm -hmm. that's how I functioned for most of my life yes, yes. and have shifted that now, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm no longer doing that. And so I think I'm trying to get a sense of how I engage with people if I'm not in taking responsibility for their emotions. And so mm -hmm. maybe that's part of what that disorient uh, that sense of being disoriented is, is that I'm in this new way of being. So I'm not yet sure how to be, yeah, what, what that, I don't yet have a feel for mm -hmm. what it is to engage with other, like I'm still trying to, to sense it out because it feels different than, than what I've known before. So I'm trying to get a sense of, am I disconnected from other people or is that sense of connection just feeling different? And I don't, I don't yet no way. Let me see if I have that. There's, there's a lot of complexity in it, <laughs> right? Right. Something about the the us and them language that we've been using doesn't speak to you, and the connection to other people you want to come from inside. I get the part very personally and deeply about being a caretaker and taking care of other people's feelings and growing up like that and wanting to make a shift and making a shift so that your connection to other people, your way of relating to other people is not about taking care of their feelings. And th this is a new way of relating. And you don't quite know uh, what, the, what, what that landscape is of the connection to the other that isn't uh, where you're taking care of the other. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think a lot of that resonates, except for the want to come from within, because I don't it doesn't necessarily feel like I want that. It just feels like that's what it is. But I'm also yeah. where I'm also where and I don't know, I'm trying to get a sense of, of what role this plays, too. I'm also aware that I've I've functioned in predominantly white spaces. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think. And, and forces a predominantly white space. So mm -hmm. I think maybe I haven't ever not, or yeah, I'm more familiar with being, I think, as I said in, in force last time at the end on the outside looking in. So I don't know that I've ever had the, the, 
the I don't I want I don't want to say like the luxury of being a part of an us, but it seems like there's something like functional like, and you have to kind of like protect their I don't know maybe it's a form of coping or some I can't tell if it's trying to cope <laughs> being in that being in a it's just a way that I've learned to cope and operate because of the spaces that I've grown up in or if this is just a shift in being and you know that connection I can still like I know I can engage with a person and be empathetic and compassionate but it just feels different mm -hmm. yes 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 well there are two things there that I want to grab you know, the one thing about uh, growing up and being in predominantly white spaces and forced being a predominantly white space and something about navigating and functioning there, not feeling like uh, uh, the solidly in the us that is connected to the caretaking sort of making sure everybody is, is okay there, was that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that there's a connection to, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just I, don't I, know. Maybe I, I added that in. I was, I was uh, wondering if you were making a connection between the caretaking and, um, and that sense of being uh, on the margin of the group. I don't know. And this, and I think this is something I've been trying to focus with for a while and, you know, just kind of be with, but there's, I think there's a lot to it here, but um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think in general, there's a way that I function that has been caretaking with everyone across race or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, with white people, it does have a certain kind of dynamic. Yes. Um, but I think, I think, I think what I'm more so saying is that to have had an experience of us maybe isn't something that's been afforded to everyone. Yeah. Um, I don't think that I've ever had that even, but even in like more diverse spaces because I grew up in a military family. So we are always new to a neighborhood. I'm also queer. So there's like a, this difference there. I mean, I think, I think there are just a lot of ways where I don't, I don't feel like I've ever, I just don't think in terms of a us and then them because I've never felt like, oh, this is a space where I feel like an us. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe I feel like I understand. When you said that, I had this sort of felt shift. Did, did you feel like, oh, yes, that's what, you know, the main thing that you're trying to say is that uh, that feeling like an us isn't afforded to everyone. Mm -hmm. And being a person of color, um, identifying as queer, being in a military family, uh, and moving around, all of those factors make it seem like a luxury and uh, that you don't have sort of the luxury to think of, oh, well, this is us and then there's them out there. There's much more of a feeling of the, the them being right, you're being the, the, on that verge, on that edge of right. us them or something. Not, right. not solidly. Yeah, yeah, and I think, and I think, but but it's interesting because I still do feel a connection, and I don't know that I don't feel necessarily a connection to like a them or anything. I just feel like I'm on the outside looking in, like mm -hmm. looking in through a window, but still. And so I think I learned to maybe recognizing that I was different and separate, but also still connected that that sense of connection came from within me because I feel like, you know, kind of as I talked about that focusing and that felt sense and the implicit and, and subconscious, I feel like is, is connected to everyone. I think. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I get that, that, that on, on uh, the social level, you feel like an outsider looking in, but on that deep human level, and this is where the ancestry comes in, you know, uh, and the, the hypnosis and the focusing there, that, that deep inner connection with everyone past, future and present, that seems very solid and real and embodied. Mm. Yes, and yeah. cool. yes, yes. And it's interesting, I did, I'm in the two year focusing course with Charlotte 
Um, and we did a one-on-one -on -one focusing session and the word toward the end of the focusing session that came up as to where that um, that shift led to was this sense of interbeing. And interbeing. so interbeing, and, and I think that's what's felt there. Yeah, there isn't this, this social us, whatever. It's not the social connection, mm -hmm. is, there's this interbeing here. And that feels more real, more visceral, mm. more tangible than the social connection. Yes, yes, I, I get that. And, and uh, often it's the other way around that people feel the connectedness on the social level, like they take for granted uh, their, you know, core group, whatever it is. Um, and and the, the deep philosophical um, level, they struggle to get their minds around. And you're the opposite. It's like that deep philosophical um, level, that existential level of interbeing is right there for you. But the, the social level is something that's a little more abstract. Um, yeah, yeah, because it's interesting. Maybe abstract isn't the right word, yes, go ahead. Yeah, because I think it's, it's interesting. I think when I engage with people, you know, having like worked as a hypnotist or even just an interaction, like I feel like other people are feeling that connection. Like I feel like other people feel like I'm connected to them well, you know, socially across socially. Um, and I can, I, I feel that, but it, it just isn't the same type of dynamic. It's not across, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, I feel like, I don't, I'm, I don't know if that makes sense, but there's, there's a difference between this and like this, I don't know. Yes, 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 yes. And I feel like sometimes I'm engaging with a person and they're feeling this and I'm like, yes, you know, I see that you're feeling something reciprocal from me. I don't feel like my reciprocal, my reciprocity with you is across here. I feel like my reciprocity with you is across here, but it's so interesting. I think I wonder, can they still get that reciprocity from me if my reciprocity is coming from here? Um, if that makes sense, like, is there, it feels like there's a reciprocity here and that it requires me to dance in the same way for them to get that uh, reciprocity, but my dance is in here. Yeah. You know? So what does that interaction yeah. look like? Yeah, and you're, and you're wondering if your dance is like this and their dance is primarily like this, are they feeling the interconnectedness with your dance being? like this yeah yeah and it's interesting because i think maybe this is another way of me emotionally caretaking how do, how does this feel for them because i think there's a, a worry and i was focusing last night and this kind of came up that maybe in shifting this way of being and feeling this there was something in me that maybe worried that it would disconnect me cut me off from compassion and empathy mm -hmm. but I think I feel like there's a sense that it's still here because I do feel that deep sense of connection. But then what does that mean when interacting with people? Yeah. That you do feel the empathy and the compassion. And it somehow has a different quality when it comes from this. It's sort of, you know, way less personal to that person and more like, oh, that person is part of this whole thing that I'm connected to. Is that right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And does that matter when I'm interacting with a person? Does will they, will it mean that, yeah, will it mean that they will potentially be harmed in some way? Be like, or that I'm less connected or compassionate? I don't know. Mm. Is there a, a, a way that I can become disconnected from people and just kind of caught up in this internal world um, because that's not what I want. I still, I think of, mm. I was reading about some of like the, the ancient like mystics and things like that, how there is this, or like, you know, monks or, you know, there's this tendency to remove themselves from society and kind of engage in this spiritual quest, but I don't, and so I think that maybe that's what this kind of feeling is, right? You like, you realize that there's 
that it's that the depth is like kind of internal and so people remove themselves from the world but I really feel like it's important to be engaged in the world mm. maybe that's what it is there's a fear here that there might might come a point where with this there's this feeling to disengage or a sense of disengagement or a feeling of disengagement and interaction it's a struggle between or a struggle with uh, the desire for this deep spiritual connection and to be engaged with other people. And you don't want to be the kind of mystic that separates from people in order to be um, more fully in the, in the deep spiritual place. You want to be the kind of mystic that can also be engaged with, with other people and be, um, be in the interpersonal world as well, and, and and you're sort of a little worried about that and struggling with that. And yeah, it feels like I've shifted where I'm where I'm living from within me. Mm. There's like been a shift of where I'm living from, and there's a question of like if you live from here, this this place of deep connection, or or this place of like a shift in awareness. What does that mean? Yeah, and and engagement with with the world. You know, how do you do? Can you do? both like I feel like you I feel like I shift so that way I can fully actualize in a way and that that would allow for more actualized and and fuller participation in the world but it it feels like that's leading me away from that in some ways I don't know that it's leading me away there's just like a feeling of how do I do this how do I, from this place, still engage? I don't know that it's, this is leading me away. There's like a, I don't, I feel like I don't know how it feels like it's possible, but I'm just not familiar with. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. It's not that the spirituality is leading you away from engagement, but it it's a different kind of engagement and you're not sure yet. I pictured you like a uh, like a baby deer, you know, on these uh, these new legs, sort of figuring out how to walk and be in the forest. Mm-hmm. That was the image that came to mind. It was just like a stumbling baby, and yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's interesting that that came came up. But there's something comforting in that actually, kind of hearing it framed in that way because it, it feels like that's a signal that there's maturation to come. Mm-hmm. You know, that yeah. you, you can get a sense, you will get a sense of your legs and that mm-hmm. you get a sense of those legs by, through the attempting, through the, you know, trying to walk on them, through the being. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess, that, you know, in, in the space with like, with force, there is that opportunity to get those, a sense of those legs, right? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. I love that, that, that you know, uh, it's meant for that baby deer to be able to walk um, assuredly. Uh, that development is just built in there. And that's very encouraging because, uh, you know, there's the message that you will and that uh, places like Force uh, are opportunities to, to try out and to stumble a little bit and not, you know, and not always be graceful. Although I experience you <laughs> very graceful, but <laughs> there's the opportunity to try out and to get more sure footed and more confident in this new way of, of relating from this place. Um, it's interesting because I felt like kind of an internal shift of relief in my chest. And I think I hadn't realized, or I'd been kind of noticing something there, but um, yeah, just kind of noticing a shift of relief a little mm-hmm. bit, uh, a little bit of a relaxing there. Like this is, this is an, an unfolding. Yeah. Um, but this is a part of it, right? This is a, a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That it's normal. <laughs> I don't know, normal, but this is, this is natural. Yeah. yeah. I got that too in my body. Mm. You know, at first there was kind of the struggle about, well, can I have both? And is it okay to relate to to the other from this deep place Mm -hmm. and uh and and what about the choosing or the you know the um am i giving up something 
um, of interpersonal relating um, in the deep spiritual place. And then it sort of shifted. And I think it shifted when I didn't get one of your sentences and I said it back wrong in quotes. And then you said, no, no, it's not like that, that the spiritual will take me away from the other people, but that I don't know from this. And then that came, then we both got that, the image of the, of the new legs. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's so, I think it's interesting how sometimes um, someone getting it wrong leads to a deeper connection with the felt sense because yeah, there's just something where the, you know, when you see the contrast, you have a clearer sense of what, what is, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it did. I feel like it pointed me, pointed me more directly to, to what it was and what that quality was. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just kind of feeling like this internal sense of relaxation. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we had that. What's kind of coming up now is this like, there's that relaxation, but recognizing there is a sense of urgency um, that was here, that's, and maybe still is here to, to be like, so desperately clawing for like a sense of, is this okay? Can I do this? Can I interact? And can I engage with people? So it's yeah. interesting that there's this sense of urgency here. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And that brings me to this question about, well, how are we doing? together, you know, uh, in this art, in your being connected to this deep place and us interacting and this dance between us. I do feel a sense of deep connection and focusing. It feels like what is welling up within me is also welling up within you, mm. you know? And that's I making our connection. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where that, that felt sense of connection is coming from is the, the shared well. It feels like, it feels like kind of like, yeah, it feels like deep. It feels like <laughs> there are waters in me and uh -huh, then uh -huh. well, and then the waters are coming up through you as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel that too when I'm the, the listener of someone who's focusing. Yes, yes, yes. So, so interestingly, yeah, I feel this sense of, connection when I'm focusing with another person. Yes, yes, me too. Yeah. I guess that's why we love that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it, makes me, it also makes me think because I know focusing and that depth of connection, maybe there's also a quality in which sometimes an engagement with people, that is the, there's more of a yeah, maybe I'm noticing the contrast. Like you can tell the difference between when you're at this level versus when you're here. I think there's something in me that is recognizing the capacity for a deeper connection through focusing, um, through the person focusing on what what's coming up for them. You know, not necessarily, yeah, or yeah, a focusing exchange seeing, recognizing the superficiality. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but just like the less of a depth um, that's taking place when I know that there's a deeper depth that is available and wanting that and open to that. Um, and not that I'm not wanting this, but I think there's something here that feels like in an exchange, even at the superficial, there's trying to be a, a mutual understanding Mm -hmm. um, uh, an exchange, a flow of some kind. And maybe there's something in me that recognizes that that can happen in a more generative way if we go deeper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and maybe feels frustrated by this kind of working up here because, you know, this isn't working as well as this could maybe mm -hmm. in some type of way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, the, that, that you, you wanting uh, this, and I think that's what, what we're trying to do in force, is to have this be helped by this, mm -hmm. that, to have it connected. And I'm wondering, you know, with, with you and me, we're resonating with each other in this place, uh, but in, in force, 
uh, there's a different kind of process where somebody will say something completely unexpected that isn't resonating with, with you know, what you're feeling, what the individual is feeling, like it will come out of the blue in a way. And then it was like, what? It was interesting because I was just kind of watching all of that unfold, trying to get a sense of how I felt about it. But I think there's something that's coming up right now in relation to that dynamic, that hearing you describe it in that way, in a focusing dynamic, there's a dedicated focusing or focuser, yeah. right? right. Even in a focusing conversation. There's something about when we're doing it in that community space where there's a jumping around, mm-hmm. right? right? Where we're we're now we're now the focuser is someone uh, else. Yep, right? yep, yep, right. And there's something about that dynamic that I think maybe I didn't I hadn't realized how to engage. How do I engage here? Mm. Um, with like it, it kind of switching and jumping around. Yes, yes. You know, how do I focus with each person? And I think also I realize when I'm focusing as the listener, mm-hmm. it's important for me. And maybe this is because there are the, there's that internal, what we focus with, but there's also the embodied reality of like my flesh and who I am and, and all of that. When I'm a listener for a focuser, I too, there's the we of, of that, where yeah. I, it's important for me to get the right distance from the mm-hmm. focuser. Right. Right. And so there's something maybe about the switching dynamic of the focusers in that space where there's something in me that's like, what is my right distance from this person who's focusing right now? Even in my own self, like there's this something where it's like, I need to get my right distance from them. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You need to find yourself. Right. Yeah. And it literally feels like the camera. It's like a camera trying to figure out how close it needs to get. And the, in a community space, it's constantly having to shift. And so thinking about how do you do that or how can that become natural or recognizing that that's what that dynamic is. I think I wasn't connecting with that before. What I get is that in the focusing practice that you are sure-footed. It's in, it's in the combining, the focusing with the interpersonal, with the communal and so you're more like the the baby deer in the force group. It's like, well, how how do I connect it here? And and it's sort of like different human experiences are popping up here, popping up here, and then there's this kind of thing and this kind of thing, and all of this is part of the whole big everything of the interconnectedness, and they don't go together. Yes, I think I think what's what's kind of really foundational to this is I've been in a lot of these Zoom spaces, right, and have realized I'm here, but I need to kind of, you know, this this kind of separate. I'm separate, <laughs> and that's also part of my care too, um, or my sur- yeah, my survival. And in that space, yeah, I didn't realize that I, there was something in me that was trying to figure out what is the right distance, like there's something that felt a little more like I felt like with Shakupe, I could get closer, but mm-hmm. maybe with other people, I had to be a little more distant. And I think mm-hmm. I didn't realize that that's what my body or what was happening internally until this conversation, that that's what that, mm-hmm. and, it, and it, the, I think there was this internal sense of disorientation and I wasn't sure mm-hmm. like where that was coming from, or I was like trying to figure it out, but I guess, yeah. I think that that's what it was. It was like, how close, how far? You're getting your footing there. So that feels like another shift in a way. I I think there's just an internal sense of relief and new clarity about what those dynamics are. Yeah, thank you. Quite a journey. Thank you so much, Mika. Thank you for helping me to to get to this this new place. I appreciate it. (laughs) I'll see you soon. (laughs) Take care. Bye-bye now.